Hey, everybody. Happy St. Patty's Day to you. Happy St. Patty's Day, everybody. I do have my green on my screen and I have green on my necklace. I don't know if you guys can see it, but probably can't. But I promise, I think it's green. It's green enough. Hopefully you guys are having a great St. Patty's Day. If you're new to the channel, we do talk all things true crime here. And I'm your host, Tanya. It's nice to meet you if you're new and nice to see you if you're not new. <laughs> I saw we had some people in here earlier. Um, I didn't realize that they had, I guess, identified the person in the river. Um, I I haven't seen that yet. I just, like, they didn't identify them, but they identified them as female. But I can't find that article. I can only find that they found somebody not matching um, the description. Hey, Mary Beth. Hey, there is Isabel. We got Jam. We got Otto. We got everybody in here. And Harlow was in here earlier. I was chit-chatting. Richie said that he was going to be listening in. I saw that. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, DM. Oh, prayers. Prayers. Ashley, welcome in, everybody. Hey, LR, Ladybug. Got the whole crew in here tonight. Got the whole crew. Lenora's in here. Well, awesome. Welcome in, everybody. Hey, Debbie. It's nice to see everybody in here. We got a little bit of a full house. Niners girls in here. West Virginia Holly girl, Teresa. Well, it's nice to see everybody. Cats live. Everybody's in here. Well, cool. Well, cool. Um, if you guys don't mind, if you do appreciate the coverage tonight, just, you know, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, all the fun things that we ask you to do. And we'll go ahead and we'll get into tonight's live. Hey, for real, for real. Hey, L Beam. Welcome in, guys. I was actually almost on time tonight. I'm like the worst about being, you know, a couple minutes late. I always like, I don't know. It's just weird. Whenever you go to sit down for a live, it's like everything happens at once. It's like, oh, great. I have to do this now. So um, I do have another channel that's, if you guys would like to subscribe to it, I'll put the link um, in the chat. I'm going to go live this week over there. I know what I'm going to go live about and it's going to be good. No, it doesn't say that, um, but that's a good try. So anyway, let's go ahead and get Riley up here. Um, that's who we're going to be talking about tonight. I'm going to get me off the screen. That way you guys can see a better picture of him. But I'm pretty sure that, um, you know, everybody knows who this is by now. And he is 22 year old Riley Strand. He was last seen um, on March 8th with his buddies down. Well, he was supposed to be with his buddies in downtown Nashville. They went out, um, him and his fraternity brothers went out for some drinking and to have some fun. He got out his new fresh shirt that he had just gotten. You could tell from the creases and they were going to go hit the town. Um, Riley has been missing ever since about 9 45, 10 PM that night. So, um, if you guys have any information, you know, always call the Nashville police department, of course, or just call 911 and say, Hey, I got some information. I'm sure they'll take it. He is six, six, one sixty five. So he is a tall, tall, lean guy. So tall, tall, lean guy positive vibes. Oh, that puppy is so cute. Oh my gosh. That looks like my old dog. <laughs> so cute. Um, let me see what I have up here. I have like everything half like backwards. Um, but I wanted to start off with reading this article with, for you guys. Um, well to you guys. So it says missing Missouri student, Riley Strand 22 was spotted falling into bushes on the night he disappeared. So, well, let's see what this is about. Oh, here, let me get myself back on the screen here. That might help. And hopefully I don't block anything. I shouldn't. I shouldn't block anything. Okay. Just their ads on the side. You know, they're what you want to read next. Um, but let's read over this. And hopefully you guys are all having a great. Let me know what you guys did today. If you guys did anything for St. Saint, Saint Patty's. I would love to know. Um, oh, really? Mom, the mom crew was, yeah, same stuff we saw last night. Yeah, I'm pretty fast sometimes with the news. Hey, Tawny, thank you so much. Welcome in. <laughs> lurking, lurking with love. Oh, thank you so much for the $2 super sticker, super chat. That's really nice. Thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> lurking in the bushes. That's me. Except for last night, I was all out of the bushes. I was on, <laughs> I was in like two chats. Um, so, it says missing college student Riley Strand was spotted falling into bushes on the night he vanished as Luke Bryan's bar denies over serving him. Strand 22 was last seen on Friday um, stumbling through the streets of Broadway, Nashville after being kicked out of Luke's 32 bridge food and drink. 
I wonder how much business this has gotten for him. Like, do you think, I think it's probably gotten more business because people are probably wanting to go in there, see where, you know, maybe Riley was the last time. Um, because when they, they found his credit card today, and I'll show you that, um, there was a TikToker out there and he like pans around and there's so many people out there that were like standing, just looking, taking video. I was like, wow, those people should have been out there, you know, helping. Done with the dishes, she said. Jan, hey, Amy, welcome in. Um, so the Delta um, Chi fraternity member was in Tennessee on a road, on a trip for their annual spring formal when he was kicked out of the bar just after 9.30 p.m. During a candlelight vigil in his home, uh, Springfield, Missouri, on Wednesday, his uncle said he had been spotted by a homeless person falling into some bushes. And I wonder where that um, where that was, you know, where that the homeless person said that they saw him. So WSMV reported that Strand managed to get back up before then disappearing into the night. Wow. So he fell twice. I wonder if this is, I'm assuming this is probably after he hit his head and not before, because after he hit his head, that's when he was like kind of heading towards like the homeless camps and stuff like that. So, I mean, I'm just assuming he could have saw him right on the street though. I'm sure that there's homeless walking all up and down, you know, Broadway and those other little streets. Cause we'll, I'll show you that too. This, this guy has been out there like doing all kinds of videos and I found him today th on TikTok and he's been out there. He's been walking. He's been in the spot where Riley was last seen. And so, um, I was like, Oh, this would be, this would be good to show you guys. So we'll watch those. And then I have, um, I have so much stuff to like show you guys. We're just going to go through the tabs <laughs> um, because I was looking at so much stuff. But it does say the outlet spoke to a bouncer at a different bar who was helping in the search who said he was approached by the person and told him that they seen him fall. Family friend Chris Dingman also told the outlet that several family members had been told that a homeless person had seen Strand. Um, Dingman added basically the areas where his phone quit pinging we now do have visual confirmation from two homeless camps that Riley was in that area. On Friday, it emerged that Luke's 32 owned by Luke Bryant was being investigated after allegedly serving him too much alcohol. I mean, even if they only served him one drink, like they said, that's too much. That's too much alcohol. Um, if he, unless he, you know, was rugged there, he had to have come in looking pretty rough running into stuff running into people and you know, I mean, this, this place is crowded down there. I just don't see him really being that intoxicated going in and then letting him come in and then serving him a drink. I just, I, I don't know. I'm going towards more towards like, I feel like, I don't know. I thought that he was just like maybe fell into the river, but if they're saying that they had two homeless people come forward and they saw him at the homeless camps, then he would have been down. He wouldn't have been like up, you know what I mean? Like I was thinking maybe he fell off one of the bridges. Um, and I'll show you that too, where he was last seen. I put up Google earth. So it's a lot better. Um, so the Tennessee alcohol beverage commission said that um, TABC that's, the, that's their initials acronym has opened an investigation into this matter to see if any violations have occurred in a statement from Luke's 32 bridge. They said we are proactively provided detailed information quickly after his visit to our business. This includes all security camera footage, photos of Riley, transaction records, and staff accounts. During Riley's visit, our records show he purchased and was served one alcoholic drink and two waters. Oh, I could have got that video right there. I, I clipped it. Um, I have it like on another page. I didn't realize it was there. Um, at 9.35, the bar said their security team made the decision to escort him from the venue. Cops made the initial suggestion that Strain may have been overserved on the Friday when him when he and his friends hit the town and visited Luke's 32 bridge. Now we remember he did go to two other bars. Um, we were reading last night. I can't remember the first one, Carrie Underwood. I think it was Carrie Underwood's bar. And then they went to Garth Brooks's bar and then they went to Luke Bryan's bar. If that makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense to anybody. Hey, Jesus loves me. I was all the way at the top. Hey, squeeze it. I just re realized I was at the top of the chat. Very true, Margo. Yeah. But if you're down there by yourself, I don't know. And him, I don't know. Like, he's just so, he just seems like 
he wouldn't be the type that would even go like go down there. I don't know, but I mean, they're saying that they saw him. He's very distinctive too with that shirt, you know, like, I mean, that shirt is distinctive. It says he reportedly told his um, Delta Chi fraternity brothers he would meet them back at their hotel, but was nowhere to be seen when the group returned from their night out. So now we've heard that he was kicked out the back door. His friend um, tried to go with him, but couldn't couldn't because he couldn't pay the tab or didn't pay or he couldn't go with him because he had to pay the tab. And the second one was he, you know, Luke's bar and girl, whatever it's called, they said that they both walked down, him and his friend both walked down and then he left and the friend went and walked back upstairs to the party that they were at, you know, like the members of the group. And now we're seeing that reportedly, you know, he told his Delta Chi members, fraternity brothers, that he would meet them back at the hotel. And then he left. So it's like, which one, which one is it? There's like three different stories going at this point, you know, um, let's go down and let's get this to one. Now I'm almost inclined to believe, you know, Luke Bryan's bar because they have surveillance video. They're not going to say, yeah, we saw him going downstairs with his frat brother or his buddy. And then him leaving without like, I feel like digital proof of that. Like, I'm sure they have a camera on the front entrance. Like, you know what I mean? That was probably, that's probably a given. Oh, wow. Okay. Sorry. I was reading the side of that and that's another case we were covering. So, um, or I wanted to cover, but wow. Um, it says here, um, his friends tried contacting him, but received no response. And at 1 40 PM on Saturday, they reported strain is missing as they failed to locate him via his Snapchat location. And they could have thought too, like they might not have reported it to 1 40 cause they might've thought he, maybe he, they thought he left with the girl from the bar or somebody, you know what I mean? Like, and they just were like waiting around and then they're like, okay, this is way too long for him to be gone. Uh, I mean, it's just terrible. Surveillance footage collected by police from downtown smoke and vape shop on church street showed strand near the intersection of second Avenue and church street. The seemingly intoxicated student was wearing a two tone black and brown shirt and blue jeans and took a tumble then quickly got back up and quick and continued down the street. He didn't quickly get back up. It was six, 20 seconds. We sat here for 20 seconds the other night. And that is a very long time. Very long time. No, uh-uh, Otto. I've never no, we didn't see any video footage of him being thrown out the back door. No, uh-uh. No, no, I don't have it. I haven't seen any of it. But I'm assuming, you know, like, and this is their statement. I'm just assuming that they wouldn't. Like, I don't know, because it even says at 935, like it says like the specific time that they kicked him out. Um, Because it says right here, like at the bottom, like the first is just like, you know, we're helping the investigation. And this is the and I did say this last night. I don't know why they really even put this part in, because as far as we know, like Riley's parents had just did an interview and they didn't know anything about this. Like they weren't even talking about this. So I wonder when they Luke's bar or bridge 32 bridge, whatever it is, um, released this statement, if they had told Riley's parents about it prior and who called them, did they tell the police and then the police called them or what? Cause this is a lot. I mean, and this it's a lot in here. It says during Riley's visit to Luke's 32 bridge, our records indicate he purchased and was served one alcoholic drink and two waters. And I'll tell you, I don't know about them waters. I don't know how they rang them in unless, unless they were bottled water. And I don't see him drinking bottled water. If he's that intoxicated after one drink and he's like, whoa, I feel drunk. I need to drink some like, you know, water. You would think he would just go up, up there and ask for a water. Not, hey, I want a bottle of water because he'd be like too intoxicated, I would feel like. But I mean, maybe not. At 9.35 p.m., and that's very specific. That's not like 9.30, 9.45. That's 9.35 p.m. Our security team made a decision based on our conduct standards to escort him from the venue through our Broadway exit and out the front of our building. He was followed down the stairs with one member of his party. The individual with Riley did not exit and returned upstairs. I just don't know. Really? I wonder how they snuck those in. Like jello shots. Man, why would they sneak in, of, of all things? You know, Mystic, like, I would think, like, a flask, 
little things of liquor, maybe a bottle of wine, <laughs> but jello shots. I mean, that's like, if they put them in like the clear container things, that's like a lot, you know? No. So did they say, um, they just said that he was like too intoxicated. Um, let me see what exactly what it said. It says our security made, oh, on a, based on our conduct standards. I think it was, they said it was because he was too intoxicated. I'm assuming they, he may have been really, really drunk and maybe he was, um, like running into people because that it, you're going to see how packed those places are. I mean, whoa, I grew up in a small town and our bars used to get busy, but not like this. This is like on a whole new level of busy. I grew up in a small town. Though. <laughs> there wasn't that many people like a fit in these bars. So, um, oh, that's actually, a, I'm going to keep this picture. Okay. Cause I want to talk about this in a minute. So I want to save that picture really quick. Okay. Um, and these are just pictures, you know, of him when he fell. If you haven't seen these, he was crossing the street here. This is where he was running like pretty. I thought it was, I mean, he was running pretty quick. It wasn't like a full on run, but it was a sprint for sure. And he fell and he hit like either the concrete pillar or the concrete on the ground, but he hit something. He gets back up. He holds his head. He's holding his head. It looks like even down in, when he's um, on Gay, Gay Street and First Avenue, like right before his phone um, last pings. Or the, I think it was the last camera that saw him. Um, we feel like when he came out, because they had been to a couple of other places, that he got turned around on the direction. Strand stepfather Chris White, White had said. The Metropolitan Nashville Police Department and the Office of Emergency Management have been frantically searching the streets as well as the Cumberland River Bank nearby amid fears that he may have fallen into the water. Police also applied for a warrant to access his phone and Apple Watch data, hoping it would pinpoint his location or at least trace more of his movements. And I guess his family said that he didn't have GPS data on his phone or on his watch. Um, he didn't have a phone plan hooked up to his watch and he didn't even have like the data like to track you like he they've already looked into that so man is that something you should really you know you should really have If he was a victim of robbery it's unlikely his bank card would have been found that's what i thought too for real for real I, that's what i thought but it is very strange to find a bank card not attached to the person. Like, why would he take it out of his pocket if he was going down the riverbank? How did it get there? Maybe it washed up somehow. I don't, I don't know. I have a video to show you about the girls that found it. There were a couple of TikTok or TikTokers that found it. They go out and they help like search, help find missing people. And they actually found it when she was videotaping. The one girl was videotaping and she was talking about something when the other girl found it. And I was like, whoa. Um, it's, that's kind of crazy. Strand's family has said they're living through a nightmare ordeal as they continue to look for him. The student had reportedly FaceTimed his mom earlier in the evening, and she said nothing seemed to be out of the ordinary, even though she knew he was bar hopping. His mother, Michelle said he's a great kid and normally very commutative. We miss him and we want him back so bad. He's always texting me, calling me, FaceTiming me. He's always in touch with me. He's very commutative. In an appeal for information about Riley's whereabouts, Nashville Metro PD described him as 6'6", 165, with blonde hair and brown eyes. Anyone with information is asking to call, asked to call the police at 615-862-8600. Very unfortunate. I mean, that he literally just was there to have fun with his friends. I think we've all been like that. We've all went out, you know, we've all went out of town or not. Maybe we didn't even go out of town. We just stayed in our own town and we went out with friends. You know, we always expect everybody to come back at the end of the night. And I know I said this last night back when I was in my 20s, like early 20s and I went out. Maybe it's because we're from a small town, but we were known to kind of just like, if our friends were cool and they were with like a group of other people or whatever, we were just like, okay, bye. Now people don't do that as much. You know, they always stick with their friends, which you should. But back in my day, they were just like, good luck to you. <sighs> good luck to you. We'll see you later. You know, um, 
And I feel like that might've been what kind of happened in this position. Like maybe his friends had some girls that they were talking to up there. I don't know. And they didn't want to leave the bar or they were just having too much fun and they didn't want to leave. Or Riley said, Hey, I'm cool guys. Um, and maybe that was, maybe he was rugged and maybe that was before it really took a hold of him. You know, um, I don't know how fast that stuff comes on. I think it's pretty quick though. I would think. I thought I was invisible at that age, but when we all went out, one left, we all left. See, that's the way you do it. Not us. My, I mean, not, not if we wanted to stay. Do you know what I mean? Like we would all go out together and walk back like to our apartments together. But if you wanted to stay somewhere, I'm, it was nothing like, okay, see you whenever you get home, you know, or see you tomorrow, you know, when we hang out again. But nowadays it is a lot better. But nowadays is a lot different than back when I was in my 20s. I feel like even it hasn't been that long ago. It's only been like 20 years or something, not even that long. So, um, like, yeah, 15 years. Just, it's a lot different than it used to be. Um, so I can't remember who it was, but one of you guys sent me a video and I was like, yes, I needed this video in my life. So do you guys remember, um, it was last night on the live. And I had told you guys, um, we were watching the video of when Riley is walking across the street, when he is, um, it appears like he, um, looks at two girls in the video and I'll show you the video too. So that you guys know what I'm, you know, I'm talking about. Um, so it's this video here, the guy here with the cart, he crosses the sidewalk. And then in a few seconds after that, Riley comes walking into the crosswalk, um, before the light is even turned green or, you know, the, the hand is even waving at him to go. So he's going to go ahead and go. So what I want you guys to really look at though, is the two people that come in the bottom corner, they're going to cross the road instead of going like straight across, they're going to cross at a diagonal. And that girl looks back at Riley when they're in the bottom corner of the video. So it's going to be like towards the end. And she looks at Riley and then she looks back at her boyfriend and it almost looked like that she giggled or something. She said something to him. And I said that last night, I was like, I know something's going on with that girl. I know she looked at him. Well, one of y'all, I forget who it was. I'm about to go through my comments now. It was somebody that doesn't chat a lot. Like, I don't know if they have ever chatted, but they sent me this video and it's like literally these people, they did an interview about how they saw him that night. And I was like, what? I was like, I needed this video last night. So we're going to go over that. Cause I was like, Hmm, how about that? So I guess apparently they did see him. Um, they just, they didn't know, I guess. I, he was pretty drunk. But then again, there's a lot of really drunk people down there. So you can't really blame them. So I'm going to play this video. That way you guys can see him first. It's only 28 seconds. So it'll probably be around like the 25 mark or something. Let me see. I can tell you exactly when they come into frame. Maybe. Okay. They come into frame around the eight second mark. So it's not very, and then you'll see them. Tell me what you guys see. I'll let it play twice. The people right here walking towards us. She looks back right there. And then it looks like she says something to him. So the red circle, that's going to be, of course, you know, Riley. But do you see them? They're kind of talking. She looks back here in just a second. And then she says something to him. I, so I think that's what it was. I think that like, I think that they were like, just kind of like kidding around, um, probably saw him pretty drunk and was like, you know, look at that guy. He's kind of drunk, you know, um, that's the only thing I could think of why they, why they did that. Um, but yeah, do you think that's why I saw, no, I didn't. Let me see T's house. Hey, welcome into, if I'm on the other page, I can't see. Hey, Lisa. 
Because I hate Lorena. Lor- Lorena. Um, let's see. We go up. Let me see the comment. Welcome in, everybody. I don't see it. Hey, Jana, man, is up here more? Try to write it. I don't want you to write it again if it was long. But I don't see it. And I know I probably like passed it by now. Um, why can't I see it? I see where it says, did you see my comment above? But I don't see it. Sorry, guys. This stuff kind of bothers me and I can't find something. Go up one more time to see. Unless it was up here further. Oh, wait. That video you showed last night with that guy running, people are saying that he's involved. They believe that why he was running, the timing of him running away matches the time Riley was in that spot. Could be. Could definitely be. Yeah. Like, that could have been a person we saw instead of a shadow. Or, you know, whatever we... That's what I thought we saw was a shadow or a person. But, yeah. No, it was long. I mean, I found it. <laughs> no, I didn't want you to write it all out again. I feel so bad. But I found it. That makes me feel good when I find stuff. Hmm. So, yeah. Okay. Well, because the one guy stops and he turns around. Remember? He stops. He turns around. He looks. And then that's when the shadow like thing, we see the shadow come like across that pillar. And I was like, Ooh, there's a shadow. Cause I was so excited that I saw that. I don't know if I still have it up. I don't think I do, but we could probably find it. I don't have it up still. I should have left it up, but I could find it. It was on someone's Facebook and I saw it earlier or not Facebook, YouTube. What am I talking about? Facebook. Um, there it is. Okay. So it was at the 5920 mark. I remember that. And I'll show it to you guys now. So there is a video going around that um, is the surveillance on one of the buildings. It's on the Birch, like Birch building. Um, so let me see if I can show you on here. I don't know if it has it on this one. Um, but I can show you like on the video. So let me see where it's at. Okay. So on this building here, it's like, what is this? Like the justice part department, police department of some sort. Um, but at the 59, I think it's 59, 20, 59, 20 mark. Um, so in like five seconds, you will see somebody that looks like they're like walking through here. Um, and it's going to look like, like I said last night, it's going to look like a ghost because you can see through the, like see through the person. It's I guess bad camera quality. I'm not sure. I should have asked Vincent to look at it because he's good at that. Oh, really? I don't know if I could use this video though, but I'll just use this one for now. Um, so maybe I can clean it up too, but um, I, actually, I don't know if I can, but maybe they'll let me use one of their videos. But you'll see the guy like, you know, um, walking, running. I thought he was walking. He looks to, it appears to me that he's walking and he turns around and he looks at somebody or something. And then you see like a shadow and that's all I see in it. But um, let me know what you guys see. And it'll be like within like the next five seconds. I believe it was the 5920 mark. I'll look back at my notes from last night. So it'll be like right here. There it is. Let me actually, oh, like, let me get the comment off. Hold on. Let me go back. Sorry, guys. I didn't realize I had the comment on there. That's not going to, you're not going to be able to see if I have the comment. So 59, 16. So in four seconds and let me get me off of there too. And it's going to be in the bottom right hand corner and you're going to, it's going to appear to be like a, a ghost figure, but it's a, it's a person walking up, I guess. See, he don't appear to me running to me. Not at first anyway. He just seems to be walking and then he turns around right here. He's turned around and then you'll see a shadow on that pillar right there walking. And then he turns around and that's when he runs. And then you'll see the guys on the bikes. 
Now it almost looks like there's someone walking behind him for sure. I could see someone standing there, it looks like, and he's standing here and they're standing by the bushes. And there's a flash of something. I didn't see that last night. And then he's running or walking away. It looks like he's running. And then there's the people with the scooters. Now, all these people with the scooters, where are they at? Because they could have possibly seen something unless the dude just ducked it into the bushes and was like, I'm out. I'm, I'm not using his video, though, is what I'm saying. I can't, I'm not using his video. I don't like that. Yeah, I don't like to use his videos if I don't have to. Um, because he's came into someone's chat before and really reamed them for using a video. So I don't, yeah, I don't do that. I can't do it. Um, I don't need him in here yelling at me. So this is the 5916 mark. And then I'm going to let it go for like, and within four seconds, he'll be walking into that frame. And I'll play it a couple times. I'm just letting you guys watch. Jersey, his shirt was black in the back. It was all black. It was only two toned in the front. Yeah, he does miss anonymous. Yeah, he, he stops like he's talking to someone a couple of times. And then it looks like he, that's when he takes off running. Almost like he's, looks like he's running to me. Hey, raised in the boondocks. And if you guys don't mind just taking a second, hitting that like button, we got 300 people in here. I think we could hit that like button. It's free to do. It's free to do. I'm going to um, rewind this back one more time and let you guys just, you know, check it out. If you're just now joining us, um, this is the Birch pedestal view of Gay Street. Um, and it is like going to be looking at what we're looking at right now is a person that appears to be walking. They stop, they turn around you see like another person or like a black figure kind of like you can't really see them come into frame and they look like they talk for a second and then he turns around and starts walking away. Then they turn around and they start talking again or he stops, they start talking again and then he takes off running. And then right after that, a bunch of kids come on or people, I don't know if they're kids or they're probably grown adults. They come on those scooters that you can ride when you're downtown. So there's like five of them. So Unless that dude like hopped in the bushes and was like, I'm out of here. I mean, he would have had to have been seen, I would think, by those people. Um, where are we? Okay, so 5920. So mine always goes to 5916. So I'll start it from here and we'll play it one more time. I don't know, Isabel Faye. They should have been spoken to, I would think. See, it looks like he stops, turns around. There's the shadow. And then he's walking again. He's walking. He's like kind of, I don't know if he's running there or walking, but he's walking pretty quick, whatever it is. And then he stops and he's talking to the person again. They're like in the shadows. And then you see something flash right there. Now, could that be a bicycle of some sort, like a like a back um, reflector or like a pedal reflector? I don't know if I took it back far enough, but okay. Right there. What do you guys think? It looks almost like it comes right in and right out of view. But okay, so it's at the like one. Okay, let's go back to here. It'll be in a few seconds. And it looks like um, right by this tree. Okay, so you see the three trees? It's the middle tree right by there. Oh, 
Oh wait, I don't think I I don't think I backed it up far enough. Sorry, guys. Just keep looking at that little tree. Where is he at now? Okay. Let me uh, move it up a little bit. Actually, that's fifty-eight. So we're just going to walk. We're going to bring it back to fifty-nine sixteen. So when he starts walking and he stops the second time, that's when you want to watch out for the um, flash of light. So there he's walking. He stops and turns around. You see someone come over because like the shadow or whatever it is, person. Hey, Tia, welcome in. Hey, LA. And then he walks down and he stops again here in just a second. And he turns around. There he is, turned around again. And you're going to see a flash of light by that tree. Right there. It's so small. I don't know if it's a flashlight, if it's a pedal for like a reflector. Like, you know what I mean? Like if he was turning his bike a certain way, if it reflected. But I can't tell if he's on a bike when he's going after him or not. Like when he's going behind him. That's so weird. It could be a flashlight, Ladybug. It definitely could be a flashlight. Okay, let me um, see where we were going next with that. Oh, yeah, so the people that were in the... Um, I went ahead and I jumped to the next vi that video to show you, so we'll go backwards. So this video here, the one where he's walking across the street, um, the people that we were looking at earlier down here in the bottom right-hand corner, I'll just fast forward it to them. I can see them. Where are they at? They already crossed. They crossed in the beginning. Okay. So these two people in the bottom left-hand corner, the guy that has the like satchel bag, and then the girl with the takeout dinner. They, um, when they're walking across the street here last night, I noticed that she looks back at, towards Riley's direction and then she turns to her boyfriend or whatever. And she says like something to him. I was like, I think she smiles or like says something to him. Probably like, Hey, look at that drunk guy or something. You know, I don't know, but they ended up coming out. I guess they came out and did an interview um, the other day. And I didn't even know about this. Someone sent it to me, um, through the comments today. And I was like, heck yes. Thank you <laughs> um, for sending that to me because I knew that those people were talking about Riley. I knew that she was, look, she looked at him. So I'll show this video again, just in case you guys are just now joining us. I'll just take it back a little bit to where they kind of come into frame. And remember how we thought Riley was on his phone. I said, it looks like he's taking a picture of himself or he's doing something like with his phone. They come out in the interview and they said that he he was in fact um, doing something on his phone. So what I'll do is I'll just play it back. I'll just play it all the way back. It's 28 seconds. Not too long. And so there's Riley there playing on a phone or doing something. Looks like he's taking a picture to me. And then here's the couple walking. She looks back just a second right there. And then she turns to him and Emma says something. I don't know if she says something or smiles or what. So, um, very crazy. Oh, there I am. There I am. I thought I was on the screen. Sorry guys. Here I am. Um, happy St. Patrick's day, by the way, if you're just now joining us, hopefully you're wearing your green. I have green on my necklace. So don't come for me in the comments or anything, guys. I'm wearing green. I just wanted to wear my Sunday shirt tonight. <laughs> it's Sunday. Um, I can only wear it on Sundays. Just kidding. Um, so, and, and if you guys aren't from, if you guys aren't aware, Riley's shirt was half like cream, half black. And in the back of it, it was completely black, like solid color. Um, and you can actually see it on this video when he walks up to the curb. It's right here. You can see it. And then he turns around at some point. Okay. I got that in a bad spot, but um, I think I went past it. But yeah, it's definitely black. So we were watching this video last night. Um, there we go. You can kind of see it now, but yeah, it's, it's black, um, on the back. So she didn't, he said, Allison, we're going to watch that interview now. She said that they didn't say anything to him. They just, um, thought he was just amongst people that were on the street drunk, you know, and that's kind of what I thought too. Like just somebody that was drunk. 
Hey, Jeff. Hey, Libra. Hey, I am too bear. Hey, welcome in everybody. When I'm reading is stuff I can't see. Um, and if I'm looking at a video, I try to look at the bigger screen. That way I can see it. So I can't see you guys. So this is the interview that they did. And then we'll go to the um, credit card that they found and stuff today. So um, this should be it. Yep, this is it. Okay. So we'll play through this. It's only a couple minutes, like two minutes long. But this is going to be an interview with two of the people that um, saw Riley that night. And they may have been the last people to see him that night. If it was, you know, in fact, an accident. Today marks one week wow. since Missouri college student Riley Strain vanished while visiting downtown Nashville. Thanks for joining us here at 6. I'm Rory Johnston. And I'm Hunter Hoagland. Cruz has spent days now searching for the University of Missouri senior. We're talking on the ground, in the air, and in the water. Still, though, no sign of Riley Strain. That's right. Kelsey Gibbs, though, spoke with a local couple who think they might be among the very last people to see him. It's all on the surveillance video, yeah. but where we... So we just crossed we up like here. crossed. It was kind of like a split. James Webb and Erica Hart say they will now never forget the walk back to their car last Friday night. It didn't seem out of, you know, context for being downtown. The couple didn't realize the importance of that walk until they saw the news last night. It was this surveillance video that caught their attention because it's one of the last pieces of footage of missing University of Missouri student Riley Strain, and they were also in the video. We were just walking uh, kind of up and down Broadway, first, second, third, just throughout the night, and um, we just walked down first where we parked our car, and during that period saw him, uh, but didn't even know about it until she saw the headline yesterday. Riley went missing on a trip to Nashville with friends on Friday, March 8th. During his visit to Luke Bryan's bar, Luke's 32 Bridge, the company tells us records show he purchased and was served one alcoholic drink and two waters. At 9.35 p.m., they said the security team made a decision based on their conduct standards to escort him from the venue. He was then followed downstairs with one member of his group, the person with Riley did not leave with him and returned upstairs. His next and only movement so far were caught on surveillance cameras. He was on the phone at one point. We thought talking maybe to someone. We couldn't really hear what he was saying. We saw him holding a phone. James and Erica. Could he have been trying to FaceTime somebody? Instead of taking a picture? They could have. Or he could have been. Well, you know, they see they see drunk people down there all the time. They're from the area. I don't expect I I just I don't know. It's a bad area. I can understand why people didn't stop and say, "Hey, are you okay, dude?" And at the same time, you know. But if he was by himself and there's like a group of people, I would expect someone in that group to be like, "Hey, you know, how you doing, dude? How you doing?" But I mean, I think those people were just like, "Hey, he's another drunk guy down here at the bars." Like probably didn't even know that he wasn't with his friends even though he was like by himself but he kind of wasn't because there was a whole group of people walking i don't so know they simply glanced at and maybe that's what they were saying maybe they were saying something to each other like well, should we help him or i don't know i would hate for that to be the case because they, they probably felt really bad behavior either way they probably feel terrible for friday night downtown but they said he headed north on gay street i even said to you it was like it looks like he's headed home the couple contacted police and now hope by sharing this, more people in the area can review their cameras. If the direction he was headed helps at all, then we know that much. In Nashville, Kelsey Gibbs, News Channel 5. Apple watches are water resistant. They're not waterproof. So you cannot submerge your, your watch into um, water and leave it there. It, I have Apple watches. I have two. I have the Apple watch four, I think it was. And then the, the titanium one, that's the newest one. So, um, you can submerge this one in like 50 meters. I think the other ones are 30 meters for up to like 30 seconds. You can swim with them. If you're, um, just like barely putting it in there. I don't even, I don't even do that. I don't even mess with that. Oh, mm -mm, you're not going to get me put my, my watch in water or I mean in rice, not this one anyway, but, um, you can wear them like, you know, swimming a little bit and stuff like that, but they're water resistant. They're not like waterproof. There's a difference. I don't know. If, like water resistant means that you could put so much water on it. It can handle so much waterproof is when you could just throw it in the water and you could take it out whenever you want. 
um, Apple phones are the same way. Now, Riley's parents did come out and they said that they um, didn't have cellular data on his phone and that he didn't have GPS tracking on his watch. Or I'm sorry, like cellular data on his watch or GPS tracking on his watch. Now they would still track you. Um, they said it wouldn't track him after his phone died. So after his phone went, that's when his watch went. And that's why they both went at the same time, if that makes sense. Like it wasn't like someone stole his stuff and turned him off at the same time or um, anything like that. Now he could have maybe entered the water. I mean, I guess someone could have taken the phone and turned it off like that. But it sounds more to me like, I don't know. I don't know what it sounds like at this point, y'all. I actually, I can't even tell you because it's, <laughs> I feel like every night it's, I, 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 we hear something or we see something and it just makes me think different or something, you know? Oh, Mary Beth. Oh yeah, they do. YouTube is, oh, YouTube's got the drama. What you talk about? YouTube's like the best soap opera on, out there. Um, I'm going to close a couple of these tabs if you guys don't mind, because if not, I'll just like keep going back to them and not realizing it. <laughs> um, but thank you guys all for being here. I appreciate it. I really do. So um, th today there was a body found floating down the Cumberland River. And when I first was listening to this, I heard that there wasn't a identification for this person. They didn't say male, female. Um, but I, I've heard from you guys that it was a female. I, I can't find any articles where it says female, but um, I did find this article where it says that it's not related to Sebastian Rogers or the missing Missouri student, which they mean Riley. So I, um, and Harlow actually, I think came in and said this, and then I found this article and I was like, look at that. It must've been the same one. Um, so it does say that Nashville, and I, I mean, what are the chances? Where, well, where, where did they find, I mean, what? Okay. So let's see, actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look this up. I didn't realize the address was in there. Um, let's do this. So that way we can see where it's at. And then we can, I can see like how far it is. Um, well, it's just going to give me the road. Hmm. I don't think that's right. <laughs> Am I in the right state? Yeah, I'm Nashville. It must be down. Oh, there it is. Okay. So it would be down here like this area because that's I would think that's where it is at wow so they it was it looks like it's a lot further down um the Nashville fire department said and I, I mean he could have went I guess that um, you know bodies do go down river I'm assuming but that looks like it's up Yeah, they do, Lisa. They do need to talk to the people on the scooters. Now, I wonder if they can, I wonder if those people will see it and they'll come forward. I hope that they do. That would be nice of them, but they might not even know they're on camera. Those may be kids, not like kids' kids, because I mean, but it's like, what, 10 o'clock at night at that time? So, I mean, that's not out of the realm. It could be like teenagers. Maybe they didn't even, they don't even watch the news or something. They don't know. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Harlow. Okay. No, she didn't see anything about the female either. That must have been someone else. Okay. But I knew, okay. So you did do the, yeah. I, because when you said that, I was like, oh, that's, that's awesome. I wouldn't, I didn't even think about that. Um, and so then I was, you know, looking around and I saw this article and I was like, maybe that's the one she saw. Um, but it says, say that the body was found at 1 PM and it was reported the body near Martin Luther King bridge. Now, I don't know where that is compared to where he was because he was found. I mean, I'm sorry, not found because he hasn't been found. But he was um, last seen in between these two bridges here. I believe this one is the James Robertson Bridge. And then this one's Woodland Parkway or something like that. The other bridge. So from here to here, that's not a very big space. I mean, I don't I just, man. And they've been like everywhere, it seems like. 
Um, NFD said that the body was wearing a maroon colored shirt. However, the person did not fit the description of Riley Strand, the missing University of Missouri student. Strand's family confirmed it was not him. Oh, my gosh. Can you imagine being the mother of Riley Strand right now? And you had to look at a picture of an unalived person, even if it's just the head, you know what I mean? Like here up, you had to look at something and you had to go through that. What if this is my child? Oh, good God. Wow. Thanks, Otto. Wow. I couldn't imagine being his mom. Man, you'd have to really brace yourself. And then think of the, the relief when you see it's not. But then you can't get that vision, that, that image out of your head. I mean, the same with Sebastian. The body that says the body did not match that of missing 15-year-old um, Sebastian Rogers either. And that's another case that we cover on this channel. Wow. The Office of Emergency Management crews have launched a boat with the Metro Nashville Police Department officer on board to recover the body from the water. It just says it'll tell us when it's, you know, more of a story. Well, thank you so much, T. Salas, coming in here with the gifted memberships. Thank you. We have too much dark in here tonight. Everyone get a membership. Let's see. How many likes are we at? Maybe I'll give some, give some memberships. Oh, look at that. 143. Let's get them likes up. I'll give some memberships. I just got to go over to the right page while we're sitting here, while we're sitting here chit-chatting. Um, oh, I went to my channel, so it might be loud. Oh, no, I didn't. Just kidding. It was a little. Um, but hopefully you guys are all having a great night tonight. You know, it is St. Patrick's Day. So I'm going to get that five membership as, ships as well. Because, you know, it's St. Patrick's Day. Get everybody green. Get everybody in the green. And thank you guys all for being here tonight. I really appreciate it. Um, so I want to show you this. these two TikToks. Like, there are two TikToks. So the first one, and oh, oopsie, I'm going to put these in the, um, oops, sorry, in the comments, or I mean, yeah, in the comments, in the chat. So if you guys want to check out these um, people that I'm sure that they would love that. And I would love that because they were down there in the river, pretty much searching for this boy. Like there's the river bank and there's no, there's no river bank. It's just rocks. And then it goes straight into the river. And then there's like a wall of dirt. Like these women went down and got in got in there and got, you know, dirty and everything. They were messing around and they didn't expect to find anything. And lo and behold, they find his credit card. It's either credit or debit card. Um, and you'll see here when they find it, she's one of the girls is talking into her phone. Like she's doing a, you know, a video. And then the other girl says like, holy shit. And then she like turns around and um, you'll see like at the end where they show the credit or the credit or debit card and it says his name on it and they have everything else like blacked out, but you can clearly see it. It's, most definitely a card, a credit card. And his um, parents did come out and say that it was his. I think that I could play this with the volume and everything too. Um, let me put this in the chat so I don't forget. And this will be for the TikTok that I'm playing right now. Louisiana <laughs> from there too? Uh, I know she lives here right now. I can't remember where she's from. They're just like chit chatting it up through here. But hey, she's right with me to go climb right down. I was like, my type of gal. No, like, did you say see that? There was like nothing there for them to walk. I, I, I didn't know about you doing all that very well. Look at her. She's got a stick. That's my type of gal. Like, well, I know the homeless I saw up above, they would have like a couple spots, like old fire pits or something. Old spots they'd burn stuff to be around and out like that. I don't think they do right here, or at least where that guy's tent is, because he's talking about how cold. What? You found his credit card? We can't find his credit card. We gotta hang up. We gotta hang up the phone. Oh my god. Oh my God. So this is just her recording later. Um. This is why it never hurts to look. Okay. I'm going to go. I love y'all. We'll be back later. Bye. 
And then that's where like they show the card and you can see his name. I guess it's a credit or debit, but it's very sad. And then I'll play it again. Anna from there too. Uh, I'll put their link in the chat again. Right now. I can't remember where she's from here. But hey, she's right with me to go climb right down. I was like, my type of gal. No hesitation. I, d I, don't know. I didn't know about you doing all that very well. Thank you, Mary Beth. Look at her. She's got a stick. That's my type of gal. Like, well, I know the homeless I saw up above, they would have like a couple spots, like old fire pits or something. Old spots they'd burn stuff to take them around and bring them out like that. I don't think they do right here, or at least where that guy's tent is, because he's talking about how cold. What? You found his credit card? We can't find his credit card. We gotta hang up. We gotta hang up the phone. Oh my god. That's a smart oh thing God. to do that she's like, I have to hang up the phone. This is why it never hurts to look. Okay. I'm going to go. I love y'all. We'll be back later. Bye. Isn't that crazy? Wow. Yeah. So, um, the cops were all down there today. They were all looking and, um, there was a lot. So, there was, there's one guy down there. There's Chronicles of Olivia that's down there. And then there's another guy that's down there with her. Well, they're not together, but they, I guess they know each other or something. Um, he's been doing TikToks. I don't know if he has a YouTube. I'm assuming he doesn't. I think he just has TikTok. Um, but the TikTok that he has, he's been like downtown following his, like tracing his footsteps and going from the bar um, you know, to where he was last seen. He does it in like the daytime. He does it at night on a Friday night around the same time. You will see how packed it gets down there. If I saw, I mean, we did see him like kind of by himself in spots, but these bars are crazy down there. They get crazy packed, crazy packed. Um, I'm just wondering, he said that his mom said that she talked to him at the Carrie Underwood I believe that's was the first one, the Carrie Underwood bar around like 730. So they stopped talking and he appeared to be fine. So he could have been pre-gaming and still appeared to be fine. I'm, you know, I'm assuming on the phone with his mom. And then maybe he had one drink there. Then maybe they went to the Garth Brooks bar and maybe he didn't have that shirt yet that he bought maybe, or that shirt he was wearing. Maybe he bought it there because it was very um, like, you know, where you could tell it was folded. And then maybe he was like, let's get drunk. We're at the Garth Brooks bar. I don't know if, if it was like drinking. Maybe somebody put something in his drink. I mean, it's happened. It I've read it's happened at the Luke Bryan bar a lot. Allegedly, these people are coming forward and saying that they've been roofied there before. So it's that's that's not good. I've seen women come forward, men come forward. So um, it's not out of the realm. <laughs> Of possibilities. Now I was telling you guys the other night, I was, I was roofied once and I knew better than to leave my drink unattended. My dad taught me don't do that. What I, what I did like an idiot was I sat my drink down and somebody said my name or something. And I turned and there was somebody sitting beside me that I didn't know because we were all out on the patio is back when I smoked. That's what you get for smoking. And when I turned back around. I just started drinking my drink again. And then like, I only had a half of it and I was, don't remember the rest of the night. Friends had to carry me home, <laughs> like literally put me over their shoulder. He was like, you were acting wild. You know, now anonymous said, I would never car car um, carry my car outside my wallet. I agree. I agree with that. Like somebody said, well, I'm a guy. I would, I would do that. I think it's, I don't know if it's this guy. I don't think it is. I have, ne I mean, Vincent doesn't drink, but I have never seen Vincent ever, ever, ever take his credit card out and leave his wallet at home. If you're a guy and you're in the chat, tell me if you guys have ever done that. Like taking your credit card out of your wallet, put it in your back pocket and left your, your wallet at home. I just see men always taking their wallet with them. Even like, even if girls don't take their stuff, they're like, Hey, you got extra pockets. Can we put this in your wallet? Whatever. You know, can I put my card in there? 
Welcome in, everybody. Never, Michael said. Yeah, nope, Brian said. Yeah, I don't think that's like a thing. Yeah, that's what it was, headphones. Thank you. I actually put her, that's the um, person's link I put in the chat. No women do that, right? Yeah, that's what I thought. I was like, I've never seen a guy do that. I mean, because if you have like a flat enough wallet, it's cool. Or your pants all have your pocket. Your pocket has like the the print of the wallet in it. You guys have done broken them in, you know? You broke them in. But I thought that was pretty interesting that those, those girls were down there just helping to look. And they were getting down and dirty in there. I mean, love them for that. I don't know if a lot of people would do that. Now, the cops, when they got there, um, and I think the other guy, it's in the other guy's video. They're like using this wire that I guess the homeless maybe used to put clothes over and they're holding onto it to get down there. And I'm like, these girls got down there, you know, just fine. They were down there. But it's kind of um, funny to see the officers attempt to try to go down there, which they've already should have probably been searching down there. I don't know if TikTokers should have necessarily maybe been the one to find it, but I am thankful that those, those ladies said, we got to hang up the phone. And they didn't just still start, I mean, continue to record. Do you know what I mean? Like, um, I think that's in good taste that they did that. Oh, design rhythm. That's, I have, that's the way to do it. I have a slimmer wallet for like concerts where it's just ID and cards. Yeah. That's what, that's what Vincent has. He doesn't have a, where you can put money in it. Dang it. I keep thinking I'm on the screen and I'm not. Um, but this guy has been down there and I'm going to put his, um, TikTok handle and since it's like right here so I don't um, just put a video put the actual handle in there he's adorable this guy's adorable um he has been down there for I don't know a few days now um but he I don't know if he's from the area I'm, I'm not really sure maybe you guys will know um but he goes there like during the day see these are the first ones during the day and then he goes there at night he walks the path and then he'll go into today when the credit card was found. So he was down there actually before the cops got there, I guess. Like, I don't know where, I don't know how him and Olivia managed to get somewhere before the police did, but I guess they did. So very strange, very good sleuthing. I guess. I don't know. I don't really don't know. Um, but yeah, I don't, I really don't know about that. I don't know how you beat the cops there, but you do. So we'll play them through these. They're not very long. Most of them aren't very long. Um, but they're really interesting and they're really, um, this guy did a lot of really good work down there. I wish that I could go down to Tennessee. Man, I bet it's nice down there. I've never been. So, right behind me. And I can play all these through, I think, because they don't have any music. So that'll be good. Is Luke Brand's bar where Riley Strain went missing on March 8th. Riley was served one alcoholic beverage and two water. Look how busy it is during the day. Imagine it on a Friday night. Before being kicked out of Luke Bryan's bar right here. Riley walked outside of the store. Look at all those down people. This strip and down this road in which you will find the vape shop. We also find out that one of Riley's friends escorted him downstairs but did not walk outside with him. After Riley walked out of the door, his friend returned back upstairs. As we know today, there are still no updates on his whereabouts. This is Third Avenue where Riley proceeded to walk out of Luke Bryan's bar and all the way down to Church Street. It's right behind me is the parking lot in which Riley fell when he was running. You see that on the video camera. As you can see right here is a vape shop in which Riley was caught on their security camera footage. Let me turn the music off. Oh, I think it's okay. I don't want it to like clip me for the music behind it. Maybe we could just do this and I'll read what he's saying. So right behind him down the road is the wall that Riley fell out is the river. Okay, that this makes sense. Why, why isn't his... Just turn it up. Wall that Riley fell out is the river. Riley's phone last ping down this road by this bridge. So it'll be the bridge that I showed you guys um, earlier. They it pinged between the officer said between these two bridges. Let me get back over to his page. Camera right here that captured the last known video footage of Riley before he went missing. As you can see on the other side is the water. This is the crosswalk right here in which Riley Strain was last seen alive. Video camera surveillance footage puts him right here before his phone last pinged up this. That doesn't even look like anything close to downtown. 
So how did he get so far out to where he wasn't looking around and seeing a bunch of lights and a bunch of people? Do you know what I mean? Like you would think you'd be that far. You're like, wait a minute, hold on a second. I'm too far out. Like if you're trying to get back to your hotel and you know, that's where you got to go. Why would you be moving away from it? You know, and you can see behind me is just, and look water. at that. You can see right here. Look at that bridge. And he walked right across the mm -mm. water and then you have tent city right there, which was noted in the news. This is so how did he get across the river unless he wa walked across the bridge? This is the direction that Riley Strand was walking. And if you can see right here, this is on the other side of the bridge. As we know that Riley was really tall, it is likely that he could have potentially been leaning on this and fallen on the other side. We, we just don't know. So right behind well, if we would know, because like you said, they saw the trash down there. He would have fallen on the trash. I mean, you know, like, I mean... Even though he's six six, he would have to be running at a sprint, jump over that bar with one foot, and just be going flying through the air to hit the water. So it's like a bridge type of um, yeah. So LA, it's like the road it, that he was last seen on is like or last pinged on is like um, let me see if I can find it. Shoot, is it this one right here? I think it's this one right here, like right right down in this area. These two roads, I think this is first and gay right here. And so this right here is like all like a kind of like a bridge area. And it goes down to the Cumberland like river. And I'm pretty sure that's what it is. But let me know if I'm wrong. I, but I think that's how it is. Because I've been like looking all day today. I've been like, okay, where was he at? Where was he last seen? Where was the last pinged? Um, so this is just another video. We'll play through this one. There's a missing 20. Hopefully he doesn't have any like little music in the background. Two year old boy here in Nashville, Tennessee from Missouri named Riley Strain. And he vanished last Friday on March 8th. This is the spot in which the last known video surveillance was taken of Riley before he disappeared. As you can see, if you walk the way that Riley walked, you will come right up here in which you will be right on the water. See that? This is the road, and this is the water right here. And there was a homeless person that looked like right there lighting up a cig. So right here is that intersection in which Riley disappeared. If you go straight up this road, you come to the vape shop in which also got video surveillance of Riley before he disappeared. Riley's phone last pinged by this bridge up this road. As you can see right underneath that bridge. Wow, look at that mess. There's a missing 22 year old. Oh my lordy. I, man, I've always wanted to go to Nashville and I don't know about it now, y'all. Huh. You think it is Roseanne? You think it's an M? <laughs> Design rhythm. Oh my gosh. So he does look airbrushed. And I don't know if it's really a filter or if it's just him. Or if he like does his makeup. Um, but what whichever it is, he's fabulous. Because I noticed he had eyeliner on. And I don't know if that's a filter or if he just does it. But if he does it, more power to him. I cannot do eyeliner to save my life. Never have. Never will now. Because I've only got the one eye to work with. But um, yeah, very handsome. So then this is going to be him there at night. And I don't know. It's just a lot different. There is a 22-year-old missing in Nashville, Tennessee. His name is Riley Strain. And I am standing in the location that got his last known video camera surveillance footage before he went missing. As we know, Riley Strain is a college student in Missouri. And he was here with his friends for a fraternity event. Riley ended up walking all the way from the street all the way down to this intersection past this closed road sign into this area over here. It is 9.26 p.m. right now, and so it's getting closer to the time that Riley actually disappeared a week ago today on March 8th. This is First Avenue, in which this is Gay Street and Church Street. Riley supposedly walked all the way up this, making his way to the bridge. As we know, Riley's so if he was walking up that, you know, um, that parkway there, I mean, it's all water on the one side. 
I would fall over. I would, I, I would definitely fall over that probably if it, I would have to hold onto the railing. I have one eye. That's probably why that's, that's why, um, that is very small. I wonder how, how big that walkway really is. I will see it when he gets on it. I just forget, um, off the top of my head. He does. Doesn't he look nice? Whatever cameras he's, he's using, I need to get it. Or maybe it's his phone. I don't know. His phone last pinged right underneath that bridge. That was the last known sighting of where his phone was active before it was either turned off or destroyed. As of today, reports indicate that Riley was served one alcoholic beverages and two waters before being kicked out of Luke Bryan's bar. It was also stated that he had FaceTimed his mother a little bit before in which she said that he was very cohesive and coherent and nothing was alarming. The fact that Riley could barely walk and was falling over in the video camera footage leads me to believe that he was actually drugged with some type of substance. Which I personally live in Nashville. I personally have friends who have testified to the fact of being drugged at Luke Bryan's bar. So right over here across the street, if we look, we are going to see this area that is right in front of the water. But these are the steps that Riley yeah, look at that. disappearing in which he would have walked right up next to this pier probably and it says it. says there's a monitor sign right there what look at that 24 hour surveillance police surveillance who are they lying to now the homeless people down there probably not the drunk people before disappearing no but trespassing look area monitor 24 hour police video imagine being one of the parents and seeing that his name, let me, I'll put it in the chat, but his name is Walt, I believe. Because it says Walt is my, oh, Walt is his middle name. So his name is Walt. I don't know. <laughs> that's his middle name. Walked right up next. So that's his, um, his link in the chat. I put it in there a few times. And as he's walking, here's the river. Like, look like, at that. Kind of Do you think, I don't even think he was leaning on it. I think, what if he fell onto it? Like, he was walking, he just tripped. I mean, it. He had that head, he had that head, um, you know, wound. Do you think he would want to go down near the water to try to clean himself up? I don't see someone doing that. That's dirty water. I would rather walk to the hospital or walk someone and say, Hey, I need help. You know, like wonder why he didn't ask anybody after he fell for help. Not saying that he is in the wrong at all, at all, at all. But I'm just wondering Maybe he didn't want, maybe he's afraid to. I don't think I would ask. Would you guys ask for help? Because I don't know if I would ask. I'm, I mean, I'm one of the people, I mean, I would just take it and try to walk. I just, uh, cougars in chat. We got the cougars in here tonight. I thought he was, a, I thought he was cute too, but he doesn't like the girls, girls. I saw another video and I was like, oh, darn him. Darn him. <laughs> but he is, he's very, he's very cute. A little bit above my waist. So I can assume that it probably, Riley could have easily fallen over that, I guess. But at the same time, there have been search parties. This is what it looks like down over the railing. I just don't Filthy, see that. full of garbage. Just it reported that Riley and his friends were staying at the Tempo by Hilton Hotel. You would think they would find them. the other direction. So my question is, why would Riley have walked down this way? <laughs> Sorry, Ellie. <laughs> Something else to really take into account is that it is very bright. <laughs> I like, these street lights are very bright. It's visible and it is it's completely dark outside right now. Also leads me to believe that it is a little sketchy that Riley was not seen, that there was no witnesses of his disappearance whatsoever. My personal speculation, if Riley was to walk up this way under the bridge and be stumbling, be drunk then I think that it is very possible that someone might have taken him. It's very extreme and unlikely for a 22-year-old male, even if they are intoxicated, which I think that he was drugged. I don't think he was intentionally intoxicated. Even in that sense, I don't think that they would be so drunk and out of it that they would fall over this. You would almost have to push yourself, launch yourself, kind of jump in that situation. There is a 22-year-old missing here. Hmm. I don't know. Looking at that bridge, though, it looks like he could go over it, but where would he, he would be right down there with all the, the dirt and junk and trash. 
And you know that somebody would have, you know, home, uh, someone homeless would have found him by now. Like, I mean, they probably go down there and look for stuff in that trash. I don't know. 22. He was 22. Oh, wow. Okay. So this one is the next video. And I think this one might be where he's on with the bar, but I'm not sure. It might be the next one. There's a 22-year-old boy missing right, is this the same one His name is Riley Strain. And right here is the vape shop that captured his video camera footage falling against this wall and then also stumbling in this parking lot. Just a little. Oh, I wanted to show you guys that. So I didn't realize, I knew that was a parking lot, but I thought there was a building right here before um, where that white truck is. I didn't realize that that is just cars. There's no building there. So I don't know if you guys were aware of that, but I figured I'd tell you. Maybe I'm the only one. Just a little further down this road is where you come to the bridge and the water in which Riley was also captured on that security camera footage. Well, I'm remaking my way down to Luke Bryan's bar where Riley was thrown out of before he went missing. Exactly one week ago today, Riley walked out of this restaurant and disappeared. Look at that madhouse. It is a rooftop bar. As of today, reports indicate that Riley actually was kicked out of the Look at that party bus. Not the back entrance. This is Friday night. It's 10. Would anybody want to be there? I wouldn't. This giving me anxiety looking at it. Wow. 16 p.m. And it is very crowded. Like this every Friday night. And nobody Ooh. saw him. Considering that Riley was served one alcoholic beverage, it makes me wonder... Was he intentionally drugged and then kicked out of this bar? In other words, is there more to the story than what is being told? I also want to touch on the friends. I know that the friends escorted him to the door, but did not follow him outside. So my question is, why did they not follow him outside if he was that intoxicated, if he was that out of it, if he could not even walk, if he was stumbling and falling, why would they not care for him? There's a 22-year-old boy missing in Nashville. His name is Riley Strain. Well, right I think we might know. The vape I'm thinking that they're, I mean, I'm thinking, and I'm not, I hope, I mean, I hope this ain't right, but maybe his friends were hanging out. Maybe they were all hanging out with some girls and they were dancing and they were having fun and they're drinking and they're listening to Luke Bryan or whatever they listen to there. You know, it's probably like live music or something. Maybe his friends were like, dude, we don't want to go yet. And he was just kind of like out of it. And then he gets kicked out. And they say, oh, you know, we don't want to, you know, we don't want to go. He's like, okay, I'll just meet you back at the hotel. I'll be fine. And then the guy goes back upstairs. I don't, I don't know. My life, I don't think that there is. Um, that's actually, I think we were talking about that last night. Um, see if there is. Doesn't look like it. Oh, wait, hold on. It says the reward increased, but it doesn't tell me. If there's like what the reward is. Just maybe try that. I don't see where it has like the thing. I don't think they do. But that would be weird. But I don't see it. It just says that I saw that where it said like in oh, wait right here. Hold on. Here we go. I'm finding something now. Um, it says here that they increased it. Um okay, so where do they have the actual number? I just saw it and I can't find it. Sorry. Um, 25,000. 25,000. So, um, decent reward. Decent. Not bad. 25,000. Um, now, this is just me. And I said this before and that's just me. It's just me. If I was Luke Bryan and I had a 22-year-old kid go missing from my bar, my establishment, my bar, and I saw him on video and everything, you know what I mean? You saw the parents, you saw this whole thing happening. This is like national news. I would be putting up some type of reward if I was Luke Bryan. I would say this is my contribution. 
We want to find out what happened to this boy. He was at our bar. We kicked him out. We should, I mean, I, that's just me. But maybe I'm maybe I'm in the wrong. But I mean, if, Luke Bryan, if you're listening, bud, better get on that reward. Okay, which one was the last one we saw? Did we we saw this one, right? So another observation standing in the spot that Riley Strain was last seen before missing is that he crossed this walkway and then walked right here and then continued to follow upwards to where I am at. Do you think he could walk up? No, I think he could. He's got really long legs. The thing about this as well is that this pathway is actually uphill. His legs are probably as so long as my body. That Riley, drugged or intoxicated heavily, would have had to walk uphill to get under the bridge where his phone last pinged. My mind, that is kind of alarming considering that someone who's intoxicated or drugged or really out of it would take the path the least resistance for. They need to release that bar footage. What if Riley was actually napped? I'll be sad if they don't. And then driven under the bridge in which his phone was turned off or disconnected so another observation could be could be walt could be okay so um i think this is just a search so we'll go through this and this is just looks like a search and then these other ones are the ones from today these last three and this is from when the officers arrived when they found credit card or debit card of riley strands which is terrifying because i mean Where's the rest of it? Like, where's the rest of the wallet? Where's the rest of the cards? Where's the ID? I hope that the officers are, you know, down there checking through all that crap for that stuff. Um, because I would think it would be in the same proximity as the card. If they tossed his wallet, maybe the card flew out of it. I don't know. That sounds, you know, out there. But we've seen crazier on this channel. So I just wonder why he didn't have his wallet or why the wallet wasn't with the card. It's almost like, what if someone stole the wallet and they took out the cards, like the credit cards and stuff that they couldn't use and got rid of them, but took the debit card maybe. Maybe they, I mean, if he was, you know, nabbed, they could have taken him and his debit card and tried to get his debit information to take money out. But he's a college kid. You could tell what college kid has money to rob. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's the part I don't get. Unless he was flashing money at the bar, but I don't see that. You know what I mean? I don't, he looks like he would be a card. He'd have a credit card or something. It is Saturday, March watch 16th, this one. And as you can see, the searches are concluding for missing 22-year-old Riley Strain. Someone needs to tell Hannah that Avengers with Purpose is no longer. Checked out of Luke Bryan's unless I got, I mean, unless they took the name. Security camera footage Comment. captures Riley's last known whereabouts walking next to the Cumberland River. After one week of searching, there have been no results found. That's sad. I'm going to turn this volume off just because you you never know. They'll get me. So, um, today Riley's family states that they will be heading back home after a week long of extensive, extensive searching for Riley. Oh, my gosh. That has to be the worst. Like, oh, my gosh. Happen to make that ride home without your child. Unfortunately, there was no findings. Locals report that if someone was to fall into the Cumberland River, it would be near impossible to find them, stating that people who have gone in very rarely come out of the river. Locals also report that it would have been very difficult for Riley to have fallen into the Cumberland River. Given that he was walking so high and it was difficult to actually get down to it. We are um, searching for you, Riley. You will not be forgotten. Hmm. That's so sad. I mean, like his parents have to be ooh, going, going through a lot. I mean, they go there to search for their kid. There's a body found in the river. It, hands down, if I was that mother and heard that, I would have been like, oh my Lord, that's my kid. I wouldn't have even thought twice. I wouldn't have, just like I didn't. I didn't think twice. I was like, oh my gosh, is this Riley, you know? Um, because of just the end, the, in Cumberland River, same area. Okay. 
but they said that the person that they found today was wearing a maroon shirt and did not fit the description of Riley or Sebastian. Um, they added him in there. And um, if you're not, if you're not, if you're unfamiliar, it's Sebastian Rogers case that we're covering here on the channel. We thankfully don't have a mind of a criminal, Tanya. Karen, you're, I agree. <laughs> Cause I say that all the time. I'm like, why did these criminals get caught? They're dumb. <laughs> They're not very smart. Oops. I meant to do this. Um, so this is going to be the, um, where they found his credit card. And this is the officers arriving there. And you're going to see a bunch of people along the sidewalk. There's a lot of people. It's crazy that th none of these people were there that night that, and helped him, you know, it's just sad. Like, look at all these people. You'll see more when I'm just like, wow. Like, I don't know. There's just a lot of people looking. You see them all like, I don't know. And look where they went down. And these officers are struggling. design rhythm that's what we were wondering and we looked it up last night and they've only the fraternity's only posted twice on their facebook account since he went missing right jay yep i mean i've been in this i've been a bartender and i've been on the other end of it and whenever i've been on the other end of it i've actually had people buy me it's only happened once i've only been like really that you know i was pretty drunk this night i'm not gonna lie and i was pretty intoxicated. And, um, my friend was like, you can't drive. And I was like, well, what am I going to do? <laughs> like, you know, I got to go all the way, like 40 minutes home. My friend that's a bartender was like, you're not driving. I'll buy you. I'm going to buy you a taxi. She literally got me a cab home and I had to sneak the money back into her bag, like little bits at a time because she kept like giving it back to me. She was like, no, that's what friends do. But you know what I mean? Like that's, I, I just, I don't understand why they just throw them out when people are intoxicated by themselves that there should be a law against that. Like, yeah, you, you, you know, like you're drunk. I don't know how you'd even do that though. Like who claims this person who's going to raise their hand at the same time, but maybe instead of like when they're that intoxicated, maybe call the police and have the police escort them to the drunk tank, put a sign up that says that like, we don't tolerate it. You get kicked out of our bar. You go straight to jail. I don't know. I mean, shit. Maybe they just need to have a jail straight for, you know, like a holding cell area just for the drunk people so that they get sobered up, you know, before they leave. Or there needs to be, is there like a, a test that you can get to see if you've been roofied? Like, I mean, like that you can take right then and there, like put it in your drink. You should, I think there's something like test strips. Maybe you give test strips out of the door. If that, I mean, if, you, if that's what they're called, like, you know. So that you could put them in your drink. Or how about this? How about those little toppers you could put on your drink and you put the straw through it? You know, give those out at the door. How much are those to make? A penny on the, a penny? Come on. Come on now. Charge an extra dollar for admit, admit um, to get in. That, you know, that solves the problem. Yeah, there you go. Test strips and drink covers. I mean, they give out like, what, condoms and birth control. So why aren't we giving out? I mean, if people are going to drink, let's let them drink, but give them something to help them, especially when the people are not like wanting to be rugged and they're getting rugged, especially women that are getting rugged. I mean, women, it happens to men, but it happens an awful lot more to women. And I think that women would appreciate that. I think we would appreciate that. Like a drink cover. I mean, even if we didn't use it, I'm just saying, even if we did, that's on us. But it would be nice to have a bar where you go in and they give you like a drink chop a topper, you know, for your drink, you put the straw through it or whatever. Just like they do at the, what is it? The place that you get with the berries in the drink. It's like Japanese or something or Asian. I don't know if Vincent likes it. I can't think of the name of it. Um, I want to say it starts with an M. But yeah, it's like those berry drinks. Like they put the, like the, foam or the film on top and then they put your straw through it. It's just, that's a smart idea. Um, here's the cops trying to go down. I don't know if there's music. It has just been discovered. There's not. 
It was found right near the embankment of the Cumberland River in Nashville. Nashville like, how do you even get down there, really? The banks for the remains. There is no way on this green earth that Riley got down there walking. He did not walk down that embankment that night. There is no way that he would have been able to do that. Of Riley, as we speak. Oh, Jersey, that's a good idea. I wonder where you can get that. Maybe Amazon? Riley's family is also here on the scene as they are making this discovery. As we know, Riley went missing after being kicked out of Luke Bryan's bar on Broadway. As we speak, the two girls who actually found Riley's credit card are being interviewed by Fox News. These are the two girls right here that actually made the discovery of Riley's missing credit card after going down into this embankment. As you can see, it's very treacherous and it's kind of a drop off straight into the Cumberland River. Reports indicate that Riley's phone last pinged right underneath this bridge. We will keep searching for you, Riley. You are not forgotten. Breaking news, 22 year old. Sad. Yeah, what's the brand of nail polish? We'll have to look that up. I've been blackout drunk and never left a friend. I've I've left, I haven't left. I mean, I've left a friend with like friends. I always feel like, cause we grew up in a small town. So if you left somebody, it was kind of like you all kind of knew each other at the same time. But, um, I've had people, you know, leave me at the bar, like, Hey, you want to go? I'm like, nah, I'm cool. They're like, okay, Tanya. But I mean, that's been a day and forever ago. Boba. Yes. Libra moon. Thank you. Boba. <laughs> I couldn't think of it. He likes that. My son's always had a wallet since he was 10. Yeah, I don't see people like, and guys are just like, they're just there. They've got their wallets. That's just what they do. I don't know. We make sure they have their wallets so then they can pay for stuff like Target. <laughs> so I'll go ahead and I'll play this one. It's the Metro PD going down there, it looks like, to look for more the stuff, take pictures or something. 22 year old Riley Strain was discovered today. As you can see, there are still locals searching and scouring the He's area taking pictures. In hopes of finding Riley's belongings or additional clues. This bridge is the last known spot that Riley's phone pinged before going dark. It is still a mystery as to what happened to him. As you can now, I'm wondering if the phone pinged under the bridge or over. I'm assuming under because we saw that video of him walking. And well, maybe of him walking. Are still here getting coverage and footage of what was discovered. Riley's credit card was found down this embankment within the trash near the Cumberland River. So he says it was, it was within the trash. So I'm wondering if it was like where she had to like pick up the items before she saw it. As you can see, right down by the river is a homeless population that rest. Anybody need a mattress? I can find one for you. As you can see. Was that a, a suitcase? Well, yeah, sure was. Anybody want to look in there? As you can see, there are people. I mean, it looks big. It looked like it had stuff in it. In the embankment where Riley's credit card was found somewhere within the debris and trash. Oh, I had my dad's wallet for the longest time. We will continue so to love. search for you, Riley. You will not be forgotten. The credit card of missing to play against Riley strain was discovered. Wow. As you can see, so something that's where it was, I'm assuming, because that's where the officer has taken pictures. Unless they found something else, um, then yeah, there'd be no reason for them to be taking pictures right there. There has to be some sort of evidentiary value, I would think. You can see there are still locals searching and scouring the area. In or is that a local and not a cop? It looks like a, it looks like an officer, but place. maybe not. This bridge maybe it is, is a last known spot that Riley's phone. Maybe it is just a um, it is still a mystery person looking as to what happened to him. As you can see, the news crews are still here getting coverage and footage <laughs> of what was discovered. Riley's credit card was found down this embankment. <laughs> yeah, the right. The Sarah Boone. As you can see, right down. But yeah, it was big. Let's see if I find it. Rest. Right here. I mean, not to be like weird, but that thing looks full. What did they put in there? What do homeless people put in a suitcase? 
You would think you'd have all your belongings in your suitcase. You take it with you. Why'd someone get rid of a perfectly good suitcase? Maybe it has a broken wheel. I don't know, but it looks like it's new. It doesn't look like it's been down there that long to me. Looks like there's another one though right there, like a pink one. Who the heck's getting rid of all their luggage? Who does that? Yeah, no, that's what I mean. The black one and then the pink one. I'm talking about the black one looks full. The black one looks like it's like protruding out. I wish I could enlarge the screen, but I don't think you can on TikTok. Dang them. Yeah, I don't know anything about TikTok, but I don't think you can. You would think they would. I mean, if, if they didn't, if you hear me now, go open that suitcase. Don't make me get on you like Idaho in the trash, you know, outside the Moscow home. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm not saying he, I'm not saying anything's in there, but I'm just wondering what is in there. What do, what homeless people leave behind? You know, normally you keep everything. If you're homeless, it's like on you. So just wondering. Or maybe they just like left the area and they didn't take their suitcase. I don't know. Very strange. Very strange. Um, and then these are just like his pinned video. So that's, I think that's all he's got as of right now. Um, he was supposed to go live. I thought this evening, but it doesn't look like he is. So, um, maybe tomorrow or something he'll be going, but he does have a really good page. I'm going to put it in the chat again. Oh, yeah. That's his TikTok. If you guys want to go check him out, he's, um, he does a lot of like true crime. And he also was sent to one of those like wilderness camps. That's his like first two pinned comments. And I was watching that earlier and I was like getting into it. I was like, he's a good storyteller. Like, you know, he's good at telling his story. So. Oh, I want to read your book. I want to read it. I would love to read that. Homeless in my area have large bags, shopping carts and wagons full of stuff. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I, I mean, I would think that he would, they would keep their bag. Suitcase gives me, me too, Mike. That's why I took it off there. I was like, man, it's giving me a, and whenever Isabel said, where's a Boone, Sarah Boone. I was like, oh, that's giving me Sarah Boone vibes. It is. Um, but I think that's all I really have for you guys for tonight. Now I still want to go over SF investigates page, but, um, we'll do that on, you know, on another live. He's been getting some good information. Philadelphia is bad area for homeless. I'm from Philadelphia. It is. Mm -hmm. Jeff said, hey, Tanya, I zoomed in way on the Birch Building clip video, and it doesn't look like Riley to me. Oh, okay. it looks like red, redneck walking with a girl in black. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you guys are good at that stuff. I was telling Vince, I was like, I need to learn how to do like that kind of stuff, but I would probably go nuts. I can't do tedious work. That's my problem. Like sitting and like doing, um, like sitting for a long time. I'm just like, y'all, I start to move around. So if you ever see me moving around, it's just because like I'm – so ADHD that um, it's hard for me to st sit still. That's why we're going to get me a walking pad. So when we're watching videos, I could be walking. <laughs> and then, I know, not walking and talking, but just walking. And then when you're on, when I'm on, I'll stop. But um, tomorrow we'll probably hit this case up again, maybe, um, if there's anything new. Or we might go over the the Twitter feed of SF Investigates. He's an investigator that investigates missing people. And so this is his specialty. I'm not sure if he's down there um, right now searching for Riley, but he's been putting out a lot of um, content and he knows people that are down there. If not, he, if not, he's not down there himself. I'm not sure. Um, Cause I haven't seen like his new tweets and stuff. Oh my gosh. So this video that <laughs> our video tonight paused on me when I, when I did the super chats and I look so really, I look funny. I look ridiculous. I should show it to you guys. Cause it looks that funny. I, I get Nancy for this all the time. <laughs> Have a good night, Jan. Yeah. A urine and blood test will give answers. Yeah. Now, because hmm. now it won't if it's GHB. That's the only thing that goes out of your system within like a couple. I feel like it's a day or something. Let me look it up before y'all leave. How long? Because that, that's why it's considered like that drug because it goes in and out of your system so fast. Okay. Um. Let's see. How long does GHP stay in your system? It's going to give me like this whole thing before. Okay, this is giving me treatment plan. Come on, guys. I'm not trying to go to rehab. I'm not on it. <laughs> I'm like, come on, guys. Um, this is going to be too scientific. 
Okay. Here's something. GHB and liquid ecstasy, the effects of GHB come quickly. Within 15 to 30 minutes of drinking GHB, a person begins feeling the euphoric and sedating effects of the drug. Depending on the dose, GHB's effects last for about three to six hours and the drug quickly exits the body. On average, it remains in a person's system less than 12 hours. Wow. So yeah, it'll roll out the date rape drug. It'll roll out GHB. That's what they put in people's drink. That's what a roofie is. So um, it won't be, it won't show in this in his system. It has a half-life to thir of 30 to 50 minutes, meaning the half of the dose taken will be eliminated in less than an hour. At that rate, most of the drug is broken down and eliminated within a few hours. Within two and a half hours, GHB is barely detectable in blood. Urine screens for GHB typically can't detect the drug past a 12-hour window. According to a 2015 article, only a tiny amount of GHB, approximately 5% or less of the amount taken, ends up in urine. All traces of the drug typically vanish in three to 10 hours. Wow. That is why it's so vital for people who think they might've been drugged with GHB to visit a hospital emergency department immediately for a urine test before potential evidence vanishes. Traces of GHB remain in the hair substantially longer. Let's see. French toxicologists from the Institute, can't say that French word, reported that they were able to identify GHB in hair collected from a our victim a month after the drug was allegedly administered. So maybe it'll be in the hair. Oh, I don't, are they draining the river? I didn't hear that. I thought it, it rained actually. I think it rained that day or that night or the next day, but I don't know how much it rained. No. Troll, or rolling around suitcase to Indiana. Indi oh no, in Indiana. Wow, Heather. I didn't hear about that. That's crazy. If, but if you die, yeah. If, if, well, I think that even if you die, it comes, it goes out of your system. Like, um, I don't think it stays in there. I think that it's still, um, And I think it's, I'm remembering because of the Kylie Rodney case. Not GHB, though. Um, just says, how long does it stay in your system? Postpartum GHB cutoff values. This is probably going to be super scientific, maybe. Yeah, it is. Um, I don't know. I'm not actually sure. It shouldn't. It should come out of your system still. I don't think everything just stops like when you stop, but I let me know. I don't know about that. Here's what's good. And it, yeah, but yeah, so it'll say in the hair, it says for 30 days, up to 30 days. That was a French study. I don't know how much she had in her system, you know, over time or whatever, but, um, they, that's just, it's very weird. Um, and then, I hope they, I just hope they find this boy. I mean, that he literally went missing between two bridges. Where's he at? You know, I mean, I don't know how much river that would be, but I'm sure it's a lot. I don't know how much they've searched. I'm sure it's a lot. Oh my God, this case was expensive. I remember that. Yeah, we'll have to see what they say. Hopefully they can find something. Um, you know, whether it's GHB or, you know, something else in a system. I don't think that he took something. Personally, I don't think that he took something willingly. He doesn't look like the type. I mean, I know that I'm saying this and I'm just like throwing judgment, but he just doesn't look like the type of kid that would be like, give me a roofie or give me this or give me that. Like he doesn't even really look like the type that would smoke a joint. Like to me, he doesn't like most kids, most guys, most kids do, you know, at that age, most women do, you know, both, both sexes, but, um, at that age, but like, like they'll experiment at least. I just don't really see him doing that. Um, 
but you know, I don't know. Yeah. Hospitals and jails were called right away. Yeah. Um, but I don't know about, yeah, I don't know about the river. I know that it was raining a couple of days, one or two days, but that's all I know. I know that you can't see through that river. Like, it's not like it's very easily, you know, where you can ride a boat and kind of look in it. It's pretty dark. You can only imagine. Like, I mean, that's where like all those homeless people probably go to the bathroom. Like, if you imagine that, oh my Lord. Oh my Lord. I don't even want to think about that. Um, but yeah, that's all I have for you guys tonight. Thank you guys so much for coming in and hanging out with me. I do have a live um, tomorrow night. It'll be around 8, 15, 8, 35. So, you know. Well, thank you, Jeff. I appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate that. Because some people, they don't like it when you use their videos, you know. And I'm usually just like a Nancy girl myself. I'm just like, Nancy likes me. <laughs> but thank you. I appreciate that so much. I may have to do that sometime. You do a lot of good animations and stuff. Or is what it's called? I don't know what it's called, but you do good at those. You're good at those. But yeah, 815 is good for Cheryl. Okay, I'm going to try my hardest then. And we'll see. Vincent's supposed to go to work tomorrow. So Vincent's got work. So yeah, I might maybe, maybe be able to come on. <laughs> he uh, stayed home. I, my days are all mixed up because he stayed home Friday. So I'm like, what day is it? But you know, it's a nasty, dangerous river for sure. Yeah, for real. Ugh. That's, that's the truth. But thank you guys for being here. If you don't mind, take a minute to hit the subscribe button. Take a minute to hit the like button. All the fun things. Comment on the live after the live. We love it when you do that. We love it when you engage in our, you know, in our lives and outside the lives. And I will see you guys all on the next live that we have. <laughs> Bye, guys.